Hi friends, it's Mr. Kong. As you can see, I am in a very different location. I'm currently visiting my parents and this is the room of my high school years and my college years. And after like the all these years that I left home, I really really appreciate that my parents keep my room the same as it is and uh, I still have all my stuff and things. So these are the bookshelves that I had growing up. And I always wanted to make a video to introduce you guys to the books that I read during uh, my teenage years, which are the books that have great impact on me. Um, you can recognize some of the book because I read a lot of classics growing up and also, of course, Japanese mystery. Uh, but also there might be some books that you have never heard of. And this is actually not all the books that I had. I remember a couple of years ago, I came visited my parents and I did a really huge clear out of my bookshelf because it was overflowed and uh, it was never a new problem to a book room. So these are the books that I kept at the time because I feel like they are very meaningful books to me, the one that I liked, or they are still some books that I haven't got to through all these years. So let, without further ado, let me introduce you to my shelves. So this is the overview of my shelves. As you can tell, it has three sections and the tone of the shelf is pink. It's because my parents thought that I liked pink when I was little. Anyhow, uh, Underneath are books, either textbooks or exercises books that are not important and I hide them away. And in the middle, there are some, um, I don't know, smaller books because the shelves are shorter. And also there are some English books over there, which is funny because the first English book that I read are was Pride and Prejudice when I moved to the States. So those are all wishful thinkings when I wanted to read English books when I was little. And these shelves are organized by genre. These are classics and modern classics. Those are foreign classics and uh, here I have my favorite genre, uh, Japanese mystery, which are not a lot, which is very surprised to me actually. And I very shamefully have Murakami Haluki. And uh, <laughs> these are some other foreign classics and some contemporary race. And now let's talk about them more detailedly. So here on the top shelf, I have some classics and a book related to history. These are actually a series of books Talking about history that are not mine, I believe those are my dad's. He wants me to read history, so he's been like slowly replacing my shelf with the books that he wanted me to read. But I'm not here, so... And these are as a collection of Lu Xun, which is a very important novelist in China, and uh, he is the activist in the early 20th century and have profound impact to Chinese literary history and all like hi contemporary histories. And these are very interesting. This is a box of the four great classics in China, but this one is not. This one is um, a very important history book, but w which is not one of the four classics. The missing one is The Story of the Stone, which I actually brought to my apartment in the States. So those are on my shelves on, in the States. And this is a very interesting book. We're talking about Chinese traditions um, for different seasons. Like if you see, those are very pretty. Uh, the title means like something heritage or like, or like something heirloom, like means the tradition that you pass down from generation to generation. And this is the character of spring. So it shows you like what do people do in spring in the seasons and uh, what is part of the culture in each season. It's a stunning set of books and it was really expensive when I bought it because I was a student and I don't really have a lot of money. I remember I saved up for this book and also asked for discount from the publisher. However, I actually didn't read it after I got it. It's one of the books that you got for collection, not necessarily to read them. And this is a very important uh, ghost story collection in the Chinese history. And here are some contemporaries, which I don't think there's a lot I want to talk about. This shelf, oh, this is from a manga. It does, doesn't have any, you know, religious meanings. And you can see that I tried to peel it off, but it didn't, I didn't succeed. And these are some modern classics that I like. This is one of my favorite author called Sun Mao, and I have one of her books in this collection in my on my shelves in the States. And she is the first 
I think atheist who I fall in love with, and she traveled all around the world, which I think have a great influence on me. And this is Alin Chang's books in Chinese. She's probably one of the most popular or famous Chinese contemporary, not contemporary, modern authors out there. And she has so many uh, modern classics, and these are her co whole collections in Chinese. And this is a book that Alin Chang published they published after Alin Chang passed away, which was a huge thing when it was published. And this is the <laughs> um, letter exchange between Alin Chang and a man that she loves. This book is actually not mine. I believe this is my friend's book I borrowed. And as you know, when you borrow a book, you just never return it. And uh, this is a novel collection of a contemporary author called Wang Xiaobo, who also have very strong impact in the contemporary literature history. And his lover is still active today. She's a very progressive feminist, which everyone, everybody respects. And some other modern classics, which are also upside down, which I probably didn't read, <laughs> to be honest. And these are other things. And we are on to our classics. I don't know why. This is an uh, English dictionary. And this is another Spanish dictionary. This is this is not fine. It must be my dad's, which he put it here after I he learned that I'm learning Spanish. Interesting. I did not notice that. Anyhow, this is the classic shelf, which probably a lot of books that you recognize. This is the tragedy play collection of Shakespeare, tragedy, uh, com comedy play collection of Shakespeare. The cover, just ignore it. They're all this style. And the story in the Bible, and this is the um, Les Mis that I read when I was little. It published the whole book in two little books, and uh, yeah, this is my Les Mis, and this is Gone with the Wind. A lot of the books that I did not know the English name, this is uh, Around the World in 80 Days. This is the one of, this is Kafka. Yeah, this is Kafka, the, the one that ma a man turned into a bug. This is 20,000 Nails. Underworld, and this is Treasure Island. Anyhow, these are some classics that I read when I was little, and uh, these are some other classics which are, I think, almost like this is, you know, normal classics, and these are the Penguin English Library Edition, no, uh, the equivalent of Penguin Library English Edition, because they are prettier, I guess. This is Animal Farm. Animal Farm. I guess they actually don't have a lot of cover design. This is Anna Carolina and uh, Pride and Prejudice. This is maybe not that, not the Pride and Prejudice that I read when I was little because I read my mom's version, but this one is mine. And uh, a lot of Dickens here and uh, The Idiot. And this is a collection of books that I loved a lot because I just think the simplistic uh, cover are really great. This is 1984. This is The Moon and Six Pences by Summerist Mohan. Well, he is a very influential author among Chinese readers for some reason, and I have read all his books translated into Chinese. Uh, this is Great Gatsby, and uh, this is uh, Dublin Nurse. Moving on here, we have more Dickens, uh, more Hugo, and more um, Jane Austen, and some E.B. White. I really like E.B. White. Uh, E.B. White is one of the founders for New Yorker, and I read a lot of his essays in Chinese. I don't think uh, English readers still read a lot of his books, but he was really huge when I was in China a couple of years ago. So I have read all his essay collections that are translated into Chinese. And these are a collection of Milan Kundra, which I don't know if I see, uh, if I'm saying his name right, but he is also very influential. And some other books, My Name is Red, and uh, this one. Oh shoot, I, oh my god, what is this? <sighs> What is this?
This is oh, Baudolino. I have not read this. I have no recollection of this book. But it looks interesting. I'm intrigued because I don't understand the cover and some other classics. And、uh, I have this, the Thornbird, which I talked a lot about in my、uh, bookshelf revenge video because I have the English version and I actually hunted it down when I moved to the states because this is my favorite book when I was in high school and I love it so much. I read it so many times, which I did not count and.、Um, Now thinking about the whole story, I just feel like a little bit creepy because the love interest of the main character is like twenty or even thirty years older than her, and even who's even a priest. So,、uh, but in my high school mind, I love the story so much. Anyhow, but this is very interesting. This is a ghost story collection of Dickens. Like who I what. And here I have some Japanese mystery, which a lot of them that I have talked about、um, in my a lot of my Japanese mystery recommendation videos. And this is Murakami Haruki, which I don't like, but I have his book. You just had to have one of those faces where you wanted to read his books. I think that's a Japanese shelf because all the books are here translated from Japanese. And here are a collection of books that I. Collected when I was hosting a book club in China, because I this is all the translation of、um, Summerist、uh, Mohan because I just wanted to collect all his books and read because we did a whole theme of his discussion in our book club and a lot of other books that I collected. So moving on to the last shelf, these are a collection of philosophy books. Those are very simplistic and minimal.、Um, Design of cover. This this is the Western philosophy history history of Western philosophy, and、um, you can see from the spine of the book that which part of history that they belong to. The orange one are different from the green one, but I do not remember the differences. But this one. <laughs> It's not mine. It's my dad's. You can see that he put his book here and put my book there. Anyway, um. And these are some contemporary nonfictions with some、uh, philosophy books, and、um, I don't really have a lot to talk about them except that this is、uh, Peter Hitler's books about China, which are very good, and、uh, he did write it in、uh, English first, and I will. I think I talked I talked about it in one of my nonfiction books about China、uh, video. I'll link down below if I can find it. And、uh, these are other miscellaneous books. This is a whole、uh, poem collection which I collected one time when I visited my parents, but I have never read. And I almost forgot to talk about the English books that I had. Of course, I have the Sherlock Holmes collection.、Um, I have. Another collection of Sherlock Holmes on my shelves in the states, which I did read, but these are the one that I got in high school and I have not read. <laughs> and some thing I don't I don't know. This cover is embarrassing. Anyhow, <laughs> oh, this is the memory of beekeeper keeper, the memory of keeper's daughter. Uh, which was popular, you can see. But at one time, you can only get mass market paperback、um, in China, which I thought all books in the states look like this, but are not true. And I have Hamlet. Well, it's very ambitious. You you gotta have one of those ambitious time in your high school where you wanted to read Shakespeare as your second language. <laughs> And we have this short history of nearly everything by Bill Bryson. And this Amy Tan gave me oh no, gave me horrible, horrible、uh, memories because I was forced to read it in high school English class, and all I can remember is how the people are playing mahjong in very dark rooms and talking about things that I did not care. So. This book actually put me off of reading Amy Tan and anything related to Chinatown for a very long time. Anyhow, I think that is all. Oh, I forgot. Did I tell you this whole collection of Sherlock Holmes are the first Sherlock Holmes that I read? Those are my mom's 
and um, I actually love it so much. This is a very classic edition of Sherlock Holmes, and I read and loved it and started to love mystery novels from here. And there you have it. I have introduced my shelf of high school and uh, college years to you. I hope you enjoyed this video. I have to do another clear out when I'm here, but those are the books that I can remember and wanted to introduce you. I hope you find this video interesting and please let me know if you have any questions and you can actually see a little bit of my current taste from my years of growing up. And don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below and thumbs up to this video if you liked it. And I wish you happy reading, stay healthy, stay safe. I'll see you in my next bookish video. Bye!